Isaiah chapter 14 and verse number 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. There's nothing on earth to, do, to compare what hell is really like. No madman, Hollywood producer, in his wildest dreams could ever produce the likeness of its horror. Nobody in delirium can picture a place so utterly terrible. No nightmare raging through the uh, fevered mind of a madman could produce terror to match the mildest hell. No murder scene with splashed blood and oozing wounds could touch the borders of the land of hell. No gifted writer could describe the roaring caverns of the unending flames, the corners of the caves, the screams of those that were unprepared to meet God and have wound up in a place prepared for the devil and his angels. Coal miners up here uh, in uh, West Virginia a few years ago, uh, when a certain pope died, they had had a mine cave in and there were some miners trapped in the bottom of that thing and they were trying to get them out and they said the miners had been down there about two or three days I'm talking about eight or ten men now not just one fella eight or ten of them and they're sitting down there they can hear them up above them a couple hundred feet drilling and <coughs> digging to get down to them and they said they were sitting down there one night about the third day were there and they saw two men walk through the end of the tunnel walk across the shaft they were in and out the other side and one of them was a monster they couldn't describe. And the other guy was a pope. And when they got them boys out of that pit and they got the newspaper, guess what happened? 20 minutes before they saw that fella, the pope died. You say, believe that? I don't know. It's interesting though, ain't it? The Bible teaches us that hell is a place where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hell is referred to 162 times in the New Testament, 70 of which came straight from the mouth of Jesus Christ. Throughout the Bible, hell is taught. And even though people do not believe in hell in this life, they'll believe in the next life. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 22, the Bible tells us hell is where the anger of God is kindled. In Proverbs 15, 24, it says hell is beneath us. Proverbs 7, 27 says hell is a chamber of death. Matthew 23, 33 says hell is a place of damnation. Job 11, 8, hell is deep. Job 26, 6, hell is a place of destruction. Psalm 55, 15, hell is is down. Isaiah 5, 14, hell hath enlarged itself. Matthew 25, 46, hell is eternal. Matthew 5, 22, hell is a place of fire. Proverbs 27, 20, hell is never full. Matthew 16, 18, hell is guarded by gates. Ezekiel 31, verse 17, hell is where the heathen go. The Bible goes on to say in Psalm 86, verse 13, Hell is the lowest place. Matthew 7, 13, Hell is a place where there will be a multitude. Luke 16, 24, no water in Hell. Psalm 116, verse number 3, there will be pain in Hell. Isaiah chapter 14, verse number 15, Hell is a pit. 2 Thessalonians 1, 9, Hell was prepared for the devil. 
Matthew 24, 46, hell is a place of punishment. 2 Thessalonians 1, 9, hell is a place separated from God. 2 Samuel 22, 6, the Bible tells us that hell is a place of sorrows. Luke 16, 23, it's a place of torment. Mark 9, 43, it's a place of unquenchable fire. Psalm 9, 7, 9 17, it's the home of the wicked. And Mark 9, 44, it is where the worm dieth not. I'd ask that you pray for us tonight. Tonight, let's get quiet now. Help me, workers. Look at me, girls. Hey, boys. Tonight will be the most, probably one of the most controversial messages I've ever preached. But I'm a long way past worrying about what somebody's going to think about me. I'm doing what I'm doing tonight for the Lord. And I'm doing it tonight because I believe He wants me to. I get no pleasure out of what I'm about to do. I don't have any kind of sadistic thrill out of telling people what I'm going to tell you tonight. I don't. I wish there wasn't no such place. Is what I'm going to tell you about tonight. But you see, I'm not as righteous as God. And God will one day show this world how much he hates sin. We're not even capable of hating sin like God hates sin. We wouldn't put somebody in hell forever. I wouldn't. You wouldn't either. We're not as righteous as God. The reason people say God wouldn't let nobody to hell is because they think God's like they are. You're so mean, you'd let them get by. And I am too. But tonight, for the first time, I'm preaching to you on the subject, a journey through the halls of hell. And I hope tonight that God will make this so real to every young person. Even if you're saved, that God would speak to your heart this evening. Please, everybody, sit down now and stay down. Sit down right now and stay down. Thank you so much. Thank you for your cooperation. Job chapter 18. Look in your Bible in Job chapter 18 and verse number 15. Brother Ray, help me over here with the lights, please. I want those top two on the left first. Job chapter 18. The Bible says in verse 15, It shall dwell in his tabernacle, because it is none of his. 
brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. His roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall neither have son nor nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. They that come after him shall be astonished at his day. And they that went before, as they that went before, were affrighted. Surely are the dwellings of the wicked, and this is the place of him that knoweth not God. I want to preach tonight on a journey through the halls of hell. Whether or not you believe in hell is absolutely immaterial. Makes no difference whatsoever. Science confirms it. Science has confirmed that the deeper you go down in, this, in the ground out there, the hotter it gets. And they say that the center of the earth tonight is as hot or even hotter than the temperature on the sun. Now ladies and gentlemen, they proved it. What people didn't believe for years and years, science has now proved is a fact. Not only that, the world confirms it. Did you know they talk about hell out there every day, all day long? It's hell this and hell that. And, tell, and the worst thing you can tell somebody is to go to hell. And they say there's no such place. They tell them until on TV 500 times a night about hell. The world confirms it. I'll tell you another reason you know there's a hell. Dying sinners testify to it. Years ago, people died like they lived. Most of the time nowadays, people are so drugged up, they die in some almost unconscious state. But years ago, brother, when an atheist died, you could hear them screaming four or five uh, houses down out in the country. They'd die screaming, oh God, oh God, oh God. Don't let me go to that place. There's been people die screaming, God, get my feet out of this fire. There is testimony after testimony of avowed agnostics and atheists who when they're dying screaming, don't let these demons take me to hell. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight the world attests it. Dying sinners testify to it. Science confirms it. But all of these things are not what I believe in hell. I believe in hell tonight because the Bible says there's a place. 53 times in that King James Bible, the word hell is mentioned. And I wouldn't take my chances tonight, that much chance over going to a place that the Bible says is there 53 times. You say, I don't believe in hell. Do you know for a fact it ain't there? Are you sure? You, have you got that much doubt? If you've got that much doubt, that's reason enough to get saved. If there's a 2% chance there's a hell, you don't want to take that 2% chance. But I'm trying from the bottom of my soul to warn every single person in here that there is beneath you tonight a little burning fire where people go that are not saved by the grace of God and washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What he said about hell is real too. Hell is a place of flame and torment. And everybody in here is going to heaven or hell. You say, I don't believe there is such a place that you're going anyway. Not, not believing is what sends you there. When you wake up in hell and you say, God, have mercy on me. And there's fire and there's screaming and there's burning and you can't get out. Then you'll realize that what he said about hell was true. It is better 
if your right hand offends you, to cut your hand off and go into heaven and know you just got only one hand and be saved than to go to hell when you die. Tell you something, if you're here tonight and you're not saved, you'd have been better off if they had performed an abortion on you. Jesus said you'd have been better off never to have been born. Go to hell. You listen to me this morning. You're not here by accident. I'm going to tell you where a person is that dies that is not saved. They are in hell. According to verse 23, a person who dies is in hell. He said, I don't believe there is a hell. Jesus said there was one. And he said it was made for the devil and his angels. And he's done been dead and been there and you've not. I'm going to trust what he says and not what you say. According to the words of the Lord Jesus this morning, beneath our feet there's a blistering hell where people go that reject hell, God. In hell a man can see. The Bible said he seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. They can see in hell. You can literally see the flame. They can see uh, the, uh, the, the wickedness and the people just like a pile of just worms all over each other, biting and kicking and screaming and begging God for another chance. Not only that, in hell, they're in torment. They feel those flames burning them. People in hell feel the flame. It is not a state of mind. Hell is not just a condition you find yourself in. The Bible said in hell there's torment. There's torment. There's fire. And there's torment that you can speak in hell. Verse 24, that man said, Father, Abraham, get me out of here. If that man can speak in hell, think of what it'd be like to listen down there. Millions and millions of people screaming. God is an extremist. With Him, it's in or out. There's no middle ground. There's no gray area. It's saved or lost. It's heaven or hell. He draws a line and said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And if you reject it, it's hell for there ain't no purgatory. There ain't no such place as no in between. You don't go burn for a little while and then graduate on up into heaven. You hear me today. If you're not saved, get saved this morning before you leave. They torment in hell. They torment in hell. These are facts that are true. Could this poem be meant for you? Read a little and you'll see what Satan has for you and me. A pretty picture he will show. The ugly part he'll hide. You'll never see, my precious friend, what's on the other side. He'll tell you to live it up. You're young and full of life. But as soon as you turn your back, friend, he'll stab you with a knife. Before too long, he's got your soul. To hell with it he'll go. There'll be no mercy there, my friend. There'll be no rock and roll. Oh yeah, weird noises will be heard. You think you've lost your mind. Wild and crazy sounds. Listen, won't be ACDC this time. The preacher warned me of this place. How hot the flames would be. I laughed it off and continued on. My God, now look at me. The laughter stopped. The fun is gone. My soul cries out in pain. Jesus, please have mercy. I promise I will change. But then a voice so cruel and loud begins to laugh at me. The mercy ceased. The love is gone. With God you'll never be. You had your chance to make it right. To be forgiven of sin. 
and you refused to walk with God or let the Savior in. You did just what I told you. Now with me you'll ever be. You'll burn with fire and cry with pain throughout eternity. There'll be no drugs to make you high, no rock to make you roll, no friends, no movies, no cars, no banks. Ha ha! I laugh when you beg and begin to scream. The pain you feel, ha ha ha, it's beyond your wildest dream. Suicide, forget it. Down here you cannot die. The Christian life you should have chose, but you chose to live a lie. You could have walked on streets of gold, a mansion to behold. On earth you thought of many things, but never once about your soul. He built his house. He's the king of the Jews. That's why the world hates him. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's king of heaven. He's king of glory. He's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. Any king you've got, he's king of that king. That's why this world don't like it. The heavens declare his glory. The firmament showeth his handiwork. No means of measure can define his limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of His shoreless supply. No barriers can hinder Him from pouring out His blessing. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. He's God's Son. Amen. He's the sinner's Savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unprecedented. He's supreme. He's preeminent. That's why the world don't like Him. They're jealous of Him. Because He's the highest of the high. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the supreme subject of higher criticism. He's the cardinal necessity of true religion. He's the miracle of the ages. He's everything good you can choose to call Him. He just can supply all our needs simultaneously. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted. Lord, in mercy, I can just go on and on and on. He's the one that's brought me through my problem. He's the one that's there when I wake up in the morning. And He's there with me when I go to bed at night. He helps me. He guides me. He feeds me. And every dime I've ever got, He gave it to me. He gave us this church. He's watched over us for 14 years. Hallelujah this morning. He's alive and well, people. And we've got the God that this world hates. Listen, if, if the world likes your religion, you got a false religion. If the world likes you, you're a false person. Amen. He said, me hateth, and they hated me before they hated you. Too many Christians today want to try to bring God down and make Him hip and cool so the world accepts Him. Never happened, brother. He don't come down to our level. We got to go up to Him. God doesn't want you to go to hell. He loves you so much. Listen, God rather die than to see you go to hell. Let me say it again. God had rather die than to see you go to hell. And He proved it on a cross 2,000 years ago when God came in the flesh and shed His blood and died to keep you from going to hell. Everything's gonna be alright Lord, I see the battle Out in front of me I don't know if I'll be able And I'll go down in defeat Then he said, do you remember Just where I brought you from Take a look
Nobody, nobody else moving, no, nobody else scurrying around so that everyone can be sure and pay attention. Luke chapter 16. Look here at the book of Luke chapter 16. This is no doubt some of the hardest scripture in the, in the entire Bible. This is... Without a doubt, the hardest scripture for a preacher to have to preach. And because of the subjects about hell, did you know that Jesus in his ministry here mentioned hell three times more than he mentioned heaven? There is no doubt there's a heaven that we're going to one of these days. There's also no doubt there's a hell where you'll go to if you're not saved by God's grace. I want to preach this morning on the subject, what is going on in hell. Luke chapter 16, and uh, if you will, we'll skip, we'll skip part of that uh, story this morning and look at verse number 22. Luke chapter 16, begin reading with verse number 22. Now we'll all settle down now. This, everyone be still. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried. See that? And he cried. Hold your finger there just a second. Man told, one time his preacher invited this man to church and he said, now if you're not saved, you go to hell. And the man said, when I wake up in hell, I'm going to be laughing. But the Bible said that man was crying. There is nobody laughing in hell this morning. The Bible said he cried. 
And he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. I want to preach on what is going on in hell. Now, it's hard to believe for us. We're sitting here this morning, peaceful, nice surrounding, good, nice, cool, air-conditioned building, cars outside, food in your belly. Most of you had a, had a good week compared to a lot of people. It's hard for us to imagine that right now, right now, in Baghdad, there's possibly bombs going off, car blew up just a minute ago, somebody, bought, half their body got blown off. Maybe right now, right now, that's going on right now. See, you know the old saying, it's out of sight, out of mind. It's hard for us to imagine. Right now, people are being killed. Somebody got, has been stabbed with a knife since I've been up here talking. Lots of people have been killed car accidents. Somebody just now died screaming while I was saying just that right now. Now, we, we, don't, we're not, we don't see it, so somehow or another we convince ourselves that everything's great. But right now, somebody's house is on fire and they're, they're screaming and trying to get help. Right now. But it's, it's not here, so it's hard for us to, to think about. Now, if that's true, the same's true of hell. Below your feet this morning, there are people weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm, I'm not sure if I've ever heard a real good definition of gnashing of teeth. But I picture it just like just gnawing on each other. And, and cur right now, you say, preacher, do you really believe that? I believe the Bible. And that's in the Bible. Now, if, if it's not true, we don't even have a right to exist as a church. Because the very same book that tells us this, tells us there's a heaven, tells us there's a Jesus, tells us there's sin, where we come from, it's all in the same book. It, either, it all stands or falls, brother. It's either all true or there's errors and, and mistakes in it. So what is going on right now in hell? Now, nowhere in the Bible is there a more vivid picture and description of hell than in Luke chapter 16. This scripture has been criticized, mocked, made fun of for literally thousands of years. Yet there it stands in the Bible. A roadblock, a wall that you run into when you read God's Word. It's there. And there's nothing we can do about it. It's still there. The Bible even said in Isaiah 5, uh, uh, 5 verse, somewhere along in there, Isaiah chapter 5, that hell hath enlarged herself. Every time I see a volcano on there and it goes like that right there, I picture there's so many people going to hell. It's falling in there by the thousands every day that it just belches out once in a while. And we call that a volcano. The Bible talks about hell over 50 times. It's hard to believe that right now, yet we know it's true deep down inside. We don't see. I, I think about it like this. I hear people say, well, nobody's that bad. Ain't nobody done nothing bad enough to make them burn forever and ever and ever. Yet we don't see sin like God sees sin. 
We're sinful. We, we, we sort of let it slide a little bit. We pat sin a little bit like, oh, it ain't that bad. But in God's eyes, sin is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. And God loved you enough to give. You know, I heard a preacher say, you know, God loved, people say, well, if God's so good, why did he make hell? He loved you enough to, he'd die to keep you out of there. He loved you enough to die to keep you out of there. That's pretty good, ain't it? You say, well, if God's love, God is love. He, he loved you enough to die for you. Jesus was God on the cross. And he gave his life to pay our sin debt so me and you would not have to burn in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, that means the church today is in the greatest rescue work on the face of planet earth. There is no other job more important than what we're doing here this morning. Hell is an awful, awful place. Man said one time, he said, well, I'm 70 years old. I ain't never seen hell. And his little grandson said, but Papa, you been dead yet? Have you been dead yet? No, you haven't. And a man walking around on this earth, he cannot tell you there's no hell. He may want to believe it. He may convince himself of it, but he ain't been dead yet. He don't know what's over there. And I hadn't either, but I've got a record of a man that has. And Jesus died, and he paid the price so he wouldn't have to go to hell. And he come up with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. So this morning, I'd like to talk about this rich man a little bit, and we'll talk about what is going on in hell. Many times when a preacher preaches about hell, we're accused of using scare tactics. Oh, you preachers just scare people. Now, i tell you what you can do for this morning. You're going to appreciate me for telling you what the Bible said. It's not fun. It's not easy. This is a part of my job that I really don't enjoy. And standing in front of a congregation of people and warning them and telling them that there is a place down there under your feet this morning where people are weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Let me say four things about it this morning. And I want to say, first of all, they're remembering. The people in hell are remembering. The Bible said in verse 25, he said, Son, remember. See that rich man, he down there in hell, he said, uh, Father Abraham, uh, help me. Send Lazarus over here to help me. And the man looked down at him and said, Son, remember. You remember that you in your lifetime had good things? If the, the, somebody said one of the worst tortures in hell will be the undying memory of a misspent life. And I believe that this morning. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's like when you have a car wreck and you think, oh, I should have been paying attention. Why didn't I do that? It's too late. See, it's already done. It's like when you're in a hospital and you think, why didn't I listen to the doctor? Now here I am having to have... See, it's too late. Can you imagine being in hell? This rich man, he remembered. He remembered constantly. He remembered that big old house where he lived. It had gates on it. His house was so nice that it had gates on it. Lazarus laid at those gates full of sores. He remembered those gates. He remembered his purple clothing. He remembered his, the clothes that he wore. He remembered uh, sending ships to somewhere and saying, bring back the finest linen. Bring back purple. Bring back gold. And wearing them around town. He remembered what he wore on earth. He remembered the house that he lived in. He remembered the chariot that it, the, the horses or, 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 the, or the mules or whatever pulled him around in. How he rode through the street and he thought, oh, my toy, it's torture. It's torture. I remember where I lived. I remember I have five brethren. I remember I have a daddy. His mind, his memory. He remembered, ladies and gentlemen, he remembered every time when his mama would hold him when he was just a little boy growing up. He remembered his daddy taking him fishing and throwing out there trying to catch a fish. He remembered playing ball and maybe bouncing a ball or playing softball or baseball or football or something. He remembered every time his grandmother tried to get him to go to church. He remembered every time he rode down the road and the church doors were open and he rode right past it because he didn't have time for God. He remembered the revival posters. He remembered when people were inviting the church and say, why don't you get saved? No doubt Lazarus may have tried to witness to him. I'm telling you in hell this morning, they're remembering, and it's torture what they're remembering this morning. You listen to me this morning? It's torture. Torture. He remembered the times he had laughed when somebody said, read the Bible. 
He remembered every time he walked past that book and turned the TV on and left it laying there. He remembered. The Bible said he could remember everything when he was in hell. I can't imagine how bad being in hell would be and remembering every time you, I think, Lord, why didn't I go to that revival? I must have been crazy. I want to be popular. I want to be fun, the funny guy. I want to be the life of the party. I want everybody to like me. And now here I am in torment. I'm no different than all these other people down here. I'm just another sinner. I, my soul will burn forever. And it's, listen, 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 listen to me. Hey, the, the world out there will tell you hell's fun. The world out there will tell you you're going to party when you get there. The world out there actually brags about what they're going to do when they get to hell. They said years ago, uh, somebody wrote this book and they described somewhere off well yonder, uh, there was a nightclub and it was called hell. The name of the nightclub was hell. And it was down deep, down in, you know, some of these big cities, you go down step, go down to the basement, and they said every step had a sign on it. And one step said, I wouldn't listen. And the next step said, I'll get saved one of these days. And the next step said, uh, I'll make it right later. The next step said, you shouldn't judge me. And every step, and the next step said, good intentions. And every step had something like, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intention. I'm going to get right. And that's why as you were going down into that nightclub, you saw that. And I imagine people went down through there and thought, how funny, what a joke. Ladies and gentlemen, they're not joking now. They ain't laughing now. They are remembering what they have here in this earth. Number two, I'm going to say number two this morning. They are in torment. They are in torment. In verse 25, you know what he said? He said, send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. In this flame. Ladies and gentlemen, he's saying, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I heard this story uh, recently about this man years ago. Preacher's up preaching. And uh, uh, he said he said he got up to preach one night, and he got in there and he said, it's having revival, and this man walked in the door. And a little bit late, and he said he noticed he looked funny because he had these big sunglasses on. And these big sunglasses, uh, the kind that wrap all the way around, it looked a little odd. And he thought, well, I don't know what that guy's problem is. And he said, after the service, that man came up to him and he said, if, if you don't mind, Pastor, I'd like to speak to you uh, uh, in your office. So they, they went in the office. The preacher preached on hell that morning and about heaven and told people how to get saved. And he said, that man, he said, I don't know, I don't know if he's crazy or what. He said, we sat down, and he said, that man began to talk. He had them big glasses wrapped all the way around his face like that. And they said, he started talking, and, that, and the preacher said, uh, sir, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, uh, uh, wonder about why, what, what's the deal with his glasses and everything? And he said, preacher, that's what I want to talk to you about. He said, preacher, if these people sitting in this church had any idea what real fire is like. They had everyone in there get saved. He said he took up them glasses off and put them down. He said, I've never seen something in my life so grotesque, so horrible. He said that man's face, he said they had, he had got his face nearly burned off. They had took skin and grafted it, strips of it over his eyes just to try to save his eyes. He said he looked like a monster. And he said he told them this story. He said, preacher, he said I lived out in a, out in a big old farm, grew up on a farm, and I inherited it from my daddy. And when daddy died, I took over the farm. He said my wife left me. He said my wife ran off and left me. He said I was going through a divorce. He said it was the awfulest time ever was. He said I had a little garden down there, and, and I was working working in my garden and my little boy four years old was, was up in the upstairs of our big old farmhouse had a big fence around it and he said I was down in the garden and he said as I was down in the garden suddenly I heard a scream and he said I could hear my son 
screaming. I looked and smoke was boiling out of the top of that old farmhouse. He said, Preacher, I dropped my uh, what I hoe and I'm up shovel or whatever he had. He said, I climbed, I fell in them dirt clods trying to get up that hill. He said, I flung through that fence and I started running. I could hear my son screaming, Daddy, help me. I'm in the fire. And he said, I run like any man would. He said, I got a big deep breath and I roped that front door and I run through that front door. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, I run through there. I could feel the smoke. He said, I could feel it uh, sizzling on my skin. He said, I run up them steps and grab my son like this and I held him. I got a blanket and I wrapped him. He said, we could hardly breathe. I was about to choke to death. He said, I put my son, there were some people that gathered up by now and he said, I dropped my son down and they got him down there uh, to safety. And he said, about the time my son got down, the floor gave out from under me. He said, I could feel that floor giving out from under me and I started falling. He said, no, I didn't know what happened. I fell through into that fire into the into the, 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 the bottom floor. He said, I didn't even know what happened. I woke up in the hospital. And he said, somebody got in there and saved me. And he said, preacher, he said, I laid there for days and weeks trying to recover. He said, they gave me the best of medicine. They gave me pain. But he said, nobody knows the pain that it feels to be burning and burning and burning. And he said, if everybody in your church would know what hell felt like, everybody would get saved. And I'm telling you this morning, if you have that much doubt in your mind that you're saved or not saved this morning, I'd get it right because they are in torment right now while I'm preaching. Right now. I know what you're thinking. People are so crazy now. They say, oh, I don't think preachers should scare people like that. I, little kids shouldn't be told that. Listen, little kids are warned about Run out in front of cars. Little kids are one one about you can't you can't you gotta get you shots, you gotta get this, you gotta get that. You know why you don't believe in preacher talking about hell around your kids? Because you don't even believe in it. If you believe in that, you'd want your boys and girls to know it. There's a girl named Mary Slesser. She was a missionary to Africa. And she when she was eight years old, she had a Sunday school teacher or babysitter or something, that got and kept her. And her babysitter, when she was eight years old, this is back in the 1800s, she got all them kids together and she said, I was wild. She said, I got up nine, ten, eleven years old. She said, I was a wild lassie. That was her words. She said, eleven years old. Me and the girls would go out, get in trouble, doing little things, lying, cheating, stealing, thing. eleven years old. She said, my babysitter got us together. And she set it down. And she said, girls. She said, girls, I'm going to tell you. And she told her what the Bible said about hell. And she said, girls, you'll go there if your soul's not been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. She's had a burden for And Mary Slessor got saved. She got scared. And she got saved. And ladies and gentlemen, she got saved and became a missionary to Africa. And there's people in Africa who went to heaven and got saved by the grace of God because one woman knew that little kids do need to know there's a hell. They do need to know it's there. Why would you hide that from them? Are you crazy? You, they need to know. You say, well, uh, they don't need to be scared. Yes, they sure do. They need to be scared. The Bible said, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. You know why I got saved when I was 18? Because I didn't want to go to hell. You know what's wrong with this generation? Nobody thinks they're going anymore. But you'll change your mind when you wake up. You'll change your mind when you feel the heat, when you smell the smoke. Ladies and gentlemen, they are in torment. There's a doctor named Dr. Maurice Rawlins. He was a cardiologist and a professor of medicine in the big hospital in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He was a devout, professed atheist. He didn't believe in any religion, any God, nothing. He was caring for a patient of his who was near death. And this patient, he was actually, was, I thought he was dying, and they were trying to resuscitate him and bring him. That man on the bed there opened his eyes, and when he opened his eyes, he began to scream. And he screamed, I'm in hell! Help me, somebody, help me. And the doctor thought, 
He was shocked. And he looked back and said, Good night. I've never seen anything like it. He said, You ought to seen the look on that man's face. He said he grimaced. His pupils dilated. He sweated and ripped back and forth in that bed. He screamed, I'm in hell. He was terrified. And he said he laid back down there and the man kept screaming and he died like that. He said, That got me really interested. This is a medical doctor, cardiologist. And he said, I begin to study death experiences. And he said, I found out that without medication, thousands and thousands of people, right when they're dying, see demons and devils and talk about fire. Now, I'm not confirming it, and I'm not denying it. The Bible don't say that right before we die, we can see mom and all that. But I don't deny that could happen. That could very well happen. There's nothing in the Bible that said that can't happen. I've heard too many stories of old saints of God right before they cross saying, there's mama, there's daddy, and there's out of their mind before that. Now, I, I don't know I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I know it could be. There's no scripture that says that can't happen. And he said he studied the people that saw a great light he said some people see a great light and they cross. He said some people scream and say they're going into fire. And he did a major study on dying experiences and halfway through it, he got into what the Bible that talks about, heaven and hell. And as a result, that man came to the logical conclusion that there has to be a life after this life. There's got to be. Life makes no sense. If you're just here today and you die and that's the end of you. There is something out yonder. There is something down there. There is a heaven. There is a hell. And ladies and gentlemen, everybody in here today is going to one of them two places. Number three. What are they doing in hell? They're praying. They're more praying in hell this morning than they are on earth. It just don't do no good. What was he praying? One drop, not a gallon, not a bucket, not a bathtub full of water, just one drop. Can I just have one? Just a drop, just a drop. I'm tormented. Just one drop, just one drop of water. That's all. Stuff that we take for granted here. Like right there, see? Look at Like that, we take it for granted. They'd give anything in the world for that. They Somebody went to hell last night, died in a car wreck, and right now they'd give everything they owned on this earth for that cup of water right there. Lord have mercy. Have you thanked God for saving you lately? Have you just got up and raised your hands this morning and said, Thank God I'm saved. Glory to God. I'll never feel the flames of that place. I deserve to be there. But I'm not going because Jesus paid my price. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you this morning, you ought to get saved. If you're here this morning you're not saved, you ought to get saved. If somebody said, you want them hellfire preachers? They ain't no other kind if they're real. Jesus Christ preached on hell. And if that, you go to a church where the preacher never said preach on hell, you ought to fire him, run him out of town. He's a hireling. He's a crook. He's a Bible denier. Tell him I said that. I'm telling you this morning, this is serious business. That book said there's a hell over 50 times. And a preacher don't mention it, is either don't believe it or it's bad for his income. One of them two. Tell him I said that too. He said, send him to my father's house. I've got five brethren. Can you imagine a man in hell praying that a soul winner will go to his house and witness to his brothers? Do you realize there's probably people in hell praying that you'll get in the bus ministry? Or that we'll go knock on somebody's door. Do you realize that? In hell, their prayers don't do no good. And I know up in heaven, they're saying, Look, go, go, shining light. Go, Brother Danny, go. You know, I, I, I was telling my wife last night, she was talking about some preacher, and some preacher said something like, Well, I, I just give all the, my life to these people, and look how they treat me. And, and we do get treated bad. Preachers get treated bad sometimes. But you know what? You know what I told her? I could say that. I am not doing this for you. I'm not doing this for, for people. I'm not doing this for a pat on the back for heaven's sake. I do what I do because I believe with all my heart God put me in this work and in this ministry and it's what He wants me to do on this earth. I do it for Him. 
And I'm warning you, I'm warning you. You may be a church member. You may have been in church all your life and never really been saved. You can go to church every Sunday and die and go to hell without God. You can, hey, you can have your name on a book somewhere. You can have Sunday school pens. You can have perfect attendance. Uh, listen, the devil goes to church every Sunday. They're praying. And finally, number four, they're cursing one another. They're cursing one another. The Bible said there's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Can you imagine bumping into people? Now it's dark. It's pitch dark. But there's blitz of fire and that blue flame hotter than the fire we have here on this earth. Can you imagine bumping into people? Can you imagine uh, somebody maybe bumping into somebody you work with? I don't know how God's got that fixed. It might be that when you're in hell, you're around the people that you are around here. I don't know. There's caverns. It's a bottomless pit. It has sides according to the Bible, but no bottom. The best, the best way you can picture it is put a bunch of uh, shoes and stuff in your dryer and turn it on. And that dryer just goes around and around and around like that. And everything just a slinging, knocking, bumping in. That's the way it is in hell. That dryer has sides and no bottom. It's a bottomless pit, like the inside of a donut. The inside of this earth, and the earth is spinning. It's just slinging them around and slinging them around. You know what well, the awful feeling is not being able to feel nothing solid under you and get, and get steel. You've been on a boat or on an airplane. It feels good to have solid ground under your feet. No such thing in hell. They're weeping. Can you imagine somebody coming down this way? Get of me! And you bump into that guy. You bump into that guy that sold you that first hit of crack. Or that first joint of marijuana. Or he sold you that first beer that you drunk. Well, yeah, you run in him. And he's not your friend then. He ain't the good old boy down there that runs a the bar then. He ain't your buddy that brought up the dope then. You hate him. You curse. You bite with your teeth. I don't know why they have to bite with their teeth. Some you're reduced to a to a worm maybe in the in the in the lake of fire in eternity where you have no arms and legs. Just degenerate back into the form of that snake, that serpent, and burn forever. But they never with teeth and scream and holler. You can't imagine something so bad as that. I was the man that run the bar. Uh, the publishers of Playboy and Penthouse and all the pushers of that stuff and the, and the pornography industry. The Ashley Madison website people that have pushed people towards sinning against God and the whole all the website people that have sat and played big shot on a computer will curse the day. You ever met some of them people? What bothers me is I'm thinking about that man when his daddy come to hell. When his daddy come to hell. And he said, Daddy, you knew this place was here. My daddy knew the Bible was true and he didn't even tell me. He didn't take me to church. Daddy, I hate you. I hate you. There is no love in hell. Everybody hates everybody. There'll be girls cuss their mama and, and try to hurt them and scrap them and bite them because their mama taught them, led them down the wrong road, taught them how to dance, taught them how to be a stripper, taught them how to wiggle their body to get money. And I'm telling you, they'll hate each other when they get there. I'll say this morning, you better get saved while you got a chance. There's a bumper sticker we got back there in the bookstore. Honest to goodness, of all the bumper stickers, this one grabs me the most. And I think it's on my car out there right now. I think everybody in here ought to get one of them and put it on your car. It says, Eternity in hell is a long time to be wrong. It's a long time to be wrong, people. Eternity in hell is a long time to be wrong. You got people that you work with, you got people that you live beside, they'll make fun of you for going to church, they'll call us, they call us old holy rollers, and let them say what they want to. Eternity in hell is a long time to be wrong. If you're here this morning and you've never been saved, deep down in your heart, some say he's talking to you, the Holy Spirit's knocking on your heart's door. I wouldn't care what nobody said or what nobody thought. Right. Listen, if that rich man could come back, 
If he could come back, he'd go to the first church preacher he could find and he'd get down on his knees and said, I'm, I'm fixing this. I don't care who i got to quit hanging around. I don't care what i got to fix. I don't care what I have to change. Give it up! People say, well, you have to give up too much. You ain't giving up nothing compared to what you're going to miss one of these days. Fifty years of fun? Are you crazy? You're not a smart businessman, buddy. You give up 50 years of old sin, it, ain't, it winds up being boring anyway. The devil's a liar. And Jesus loved you. And he let them beat nails in his hand. I know people that say, well, if that's true, I'm just mad at God. Well, you, you see where that gets you. See where that gets you. See if it'll stop you from winding up in hell when you die. Listen, people. You can't beat God. You just well join Him. Don't let your stubborn will take you to hell when you die. What are they doing in hell? They're remembering. They're praying. They're burning. And they're cursing each other. And that's just a little part of it. I want you to stand and bow your head, please. Let me come real slow. I'm going to get just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me, O Lamb of God. Listen, every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody's moving. Nobody's moving. Do not move out of this church. Everybody pray right now. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. If you're here this morning, you say, Brother Danny, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell, Brother Danny. I, I don't want to go to hell when I die. And I need this church to pray for me. I've never been saved. Or maybe I thought I did when I was little. I don't know if I am or not. Please, please pray for me. We'd like to pray for you this morning. We're not going to come to you. We're not going to embarrass you. We're just going to pray for you, I promise. Would you let us pray for you this morning? Slip up your hand. Slip up your hand. Take it right back down. Raise it up real high. Raise it up real high so I can see you. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Five, six hands. Anybody else? Preacher, I don't know if I'm saved or not. Preacher, I think I'm saved. I thought I was. Or I know I'm not. Please pray for me. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? There's some here this morning say, Brother Danny, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. But to be honest with you, I've just been fiddling around thinking about myself. And I ain't been thinking about sinners going to hell. Pray for me that I'll get a burden. Pray for me that I'll be bold and I'll get a witness and I'll, I'll do something for God while i got a change. Pray for me. Would you slip up your hand, please? God bless you. Hands all over the building. All over the building. All over the building this morning. Listen, I didn't write this book. I didn't write the Bible. My job's to preach it. And you ain't going to do yourself no good fighting it. If I was you here this morning, I'd get right out of my seat. I ain't trying to make a Baptist out of you. I ain't trying to make a church member out of you. I want you to get saved and go to heaven. I'd get down here this morning and I'd settle this issue once and forever. I'd settle it today before I leave this church. If you don't get nothing else right in your life, get this. You make sure your taxes are paid. You make sure you you're, you're, you got a gas in your car. You make sure, make sure you're going to heaven when you leave this world because you might leave today. You might leave today. I feel the Lord strong in here this morning. and God's speaking to somebody's heart. I'm going to ask you that lifted your hands. We're going to pray and we're going to sing this first verse real slow. If God's speaking to your heart, real slow, we're going to sing. You get out of your seat and you walk down here and get down on your knees and somebody will take the Bible and they'll tell you how to get saved. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that your will will be done in our lives this morning, Lord. I pray that you'd bless today. I pray that you'd help that man, that woman, that boy, girl who raised their hand get out of their seat and come down here and get it settled this morning. In Jesus' name we pray and for His sake. Amen. Let's sing this morning. It's me. Come. You come on right now. Come on. Come on. If you raise your hand, get out of your seat and come. Right now. Don't, don't move. Don't move unless you're coming to this altar. You come on right now. Come on, young man. Come on, young lady. Maybe you're a Christian. You raise your hand. You say, preacher, I need to get right with God. You come on right now. Come on. Let's do business with the Lord right now. Amen. Amen. You come right now. Hill tree, not. 
two. Come on. Come on. Let's get down here and do business with God. If you raised your hand, you come right now. Come on. Come on right now. Amen. Amen. You come. If you're not saved here this morning, you come right now. Right now. It's going to be too late one day. Do it right now while you got a chance, friend. Do it right now while you got a chance. You come. Come on right now. Come. Amen. Y'all pray for this dear lady. I come. Come on. Come on. Get down on your knees, young people. Let's give our heart to Jesus this morning. You come right now. Come on right now. Amen. Him. Receive. Come on, boys. Pray that young man. Amen. Let God speak to you this morning. Clean. Relieve. Amen. Because thy promise. I believe his promise. I believe his promise. Come on now. Of God I come. Let's sing. Let's sing. Everybody, come on now. Let's sing. Just as. Come on right now. You come right now. You come right now. Come on. Come on. Come on, big man. Come on. Come on. 